Welcome to the set of Flat Earther. We're shooting in Fuego, and Fuego is a really great big dance club. So we're hanging curtain right now, so we can actually block out uh, everything and not have to dress that and do that. And then we're going to put in tables here, and all our extras are going to sit here. So it looks like a nice you know, popular restaurant, not a dance club. And uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. saw Flat Earther as its original one act. To translate that stage play into a film, the first instinct I had with it was to keep that stage play theatrical feeling of a continuous performance. It should be done as one shot. A well-staged one -er is kind of like the filmmaker holy grail. Like if actually being able to pull that off is a real magic trick. I'm an editor by trade, so removing the ability to edit the movie from my uh, toolkit was intimidating kind of puts my back up against the wall. I think that's a great artistic standpoint to start making a film from. It's such a challenging thing to do a one shot. There are always gonna be takes where there are bits and pieces that are like really singing, and then there are bits and pieces that you're like, eh, I could do that better. When you do it in one take, you just kind of like keep your fingers crossed that you're gonna get everything feeling really good, which is impossible, of course, because if it's good for you, it's maybe not great for camera. If it's great for camera, it's not necessarily good for the actors. It's just a matter of kind of like trying to find a good groove and a riot. Okay, we can do a little bit of a push. Okay. I took an effort to make sure that in the script that I started the action outside. And so you see the beginning of the date and they walk across the street and they go inside and to kind of actually help punctuate different parts of their conversation by allowing the location shifts to go with the shifts of energy in the conversation. The difficulty in film is the tech side. It's getting the camera where it needs to go. And that was, in fact, the big issue was getting all the tech stuff together because that was the stuff you couldn't play with outside of the actual shoot night. Yeah, yeah. you guys meet TV George? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Nice to meet you. I knew that doing a nine minute film in a single take would be a huge challenge. If I call for take two, we're reshooting the whole movie. The, the real trick was working with our steady cam operator, Keith Peters. And that was the fun thing for George was George was just the cinematographer and not one of the camera operators in this time. It's a rare thing for the films we do together. So he could just stand behind the monitor and look at the lights. Since you're looking in 360 degrees, you can't have any light stands on the floor. You can't have a boom operator. It's a choreography in its own right. A huge technical challenge to do this. You have to provide even clean lighting at every point along the way. And the question is, how do you do that when you're gonna see 360 degrees of the restaurant? It was a great production design solution provided by Mickey Shatterland, which is these guys. These lights are going to be in our lives forever after that, I think, we bought so many of them. The key to doing uh, a one is use as many practicals as you can. Let them give off enough light to light the people around, but also not be too bright. They're gonna blow out in the shot. It's a delicate balance, but it, it's essential. And a lot of that is credit to uh, Michelle Satterland for hanging up all those damn lights. I called it the Eyes Wide Shut Cafe at a certain point because it was just an entire environment lit by these kind of Christmas lights. The fact that it's one shot, it's a good challenge in working with a really talented actor like Amy. It, it just kind of makes it fun to actually get in there and play. Any nerves that that would create actually just turns into, I think, enthusiasm. It's really fun to just give yourself a challenge. When Brian came to me with this idea, I'm like, are you crazy? It's dialogues. Just get shot, 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 and then you can condense everything. It's like, no, it's a little dangerously. And if you're going on and making a short film, why the hell not? One thing the director doesn't want to relinquish is control. Because I can't make the cameraman do everything I want inside a nine minute block. I can't make the actors give every expression that I've seen them give in rehearsals and other takes. I have to rely on the piece as a cohesive whole, that it's just going to flow very much like a stage play, which is what the experience I wanted to replicate was, because that's where this came from. So you turn into the cruising shot right on the Okay. So much of filmmaking is having a clear, precise direction of what you want the movie to be, and then still being open to the areas where everybody else in the crew can actually improve it. Just because you're the originator of something, that doesn't mean other people aren't going to bring better ideas. A huge part of being a filmmaker is knowing when to say yes and no to those other ideas. You have to kind of be open to hearing a little bit from everyone just to make sure you can get the film done. That's awesome. We'll do it again. Yes, you shot. You shot. We made a movie!